Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and make a simple video that lasts 15 seconds using our model. If you're at the point where you exported your PNG, uh, then let's go ahead and change our settings here. First of all, under the rendering, I'm going to put it to 20% because I want this to happen much quicker. I'm going to verify right here that I've got 450 frames to give me 50 seconds. You may have 90 in there. You may have 250, the default number. It's simple to just add more frames and you can may need to scroll out grabbing the end of the scroll bar, scroll bar here so that you can see all of the frames. I'm going to go down and make sure that I'm rendering to a different folder. Clicking on this folder here will take me to well where I was before, 100% no problem render. I want to be in blender renders though. So if you've forgotten how to get there and you haven't made a bookmark, this is how you do it. You click on documents and we're getting to the pictures folder. This is totally separate from our documents. Now there's my blender renders folder and in order to not have to do that again, I'm going to add that bookmark so I can make it here easily. I'm going to go ahead and type today's date 0306 no problem and then this is going to be a 20% render at first in order to happen quickly. The other thing that's going to help this happen quickly is going to our global settings. Notice it's not environmental lighting of one anymore. And right here where it says samples, which makes the shadows really nice, I'm putting it back down to five or it can even be lower than that uh, for a very quick render. Let's go and keyframe now. So you'll notice I have some keyframes. I was doing some experimenting. I'm going to go ahead and go to my transform qualities for my camera and right click and just clear the keyframes. I'm going to go to my object here and right click and clear the keyframes. So I've got a nice fresh slate to start with. I'm going to go to frame number one and I'm going to position my camera right along either a red or green axis. That's going to help me move the camera around more easily. And I want a nice side view with it really uh, in good shape here. So you can see that I didn't quite get there. Now I can go to my transform properties for my camera and I can move them over. Instead of trying to reposition uh, using Control alt 0 on the number pad. If there's nothing else in your uh, model here, then it is possible to right click with the mouse and make those small adjustments. Those of us who have added a plane or when you have multiple objects, it's not so easy to do that. You have to left click with the mouse and now my camera is in a new position. It's a good idea to go ahead and keyframe the camera's location and rotation at that point. We also now want to go to our model and we're going to set our rotation here to zero and insert a keyframe. So now we've got a good starting side view of our object. I'm going to go to frame 150. I can guess at it there. I can type it in. I can get there lots of different ways. And now I want my object to rotate one full turn in that first five seconds. I'm going to right click and insert a keyframe so it remembers that rotation. And I want the camera to stay in place as well. So I'm going to jump to that same keyframe for my object, go to camera, and set a keyframe for location and rotation. It is possible to just have this one because anything that came before it, it'll just be in that same position. Now I want to rotate the object and move the camera at the same time. Let's go ahead and move our object, our camera first. I'm going to go to 400 so that my camera stops moving and then at 450 it'll finish spinning. This new location for the camera, I can orbit down and control alt zero. Now the problem is we do not want it to cut off any part of our model or we'll lose the, the real look of this whole thing. So I'm going to move my camera out a little bit and again I can use these and I don't want it to be too, too close to the edges at any point because it's going to be spinning. So I'm going to move out a little bit more so I've got plenty of room for it to spin around. And I'm going to go ahead and insert that keyframe for location and rotation on my camera. So from the side view, it spins and then oh, look what happens. It goes way down. So we want it to stay in the middle. 
this is one thing that we can try and do. I'm going to go to the middle when it's off the screen and I'm going to insert a fixer keyframe, something that it will use in between so that the object stays where it, we really want it to be. I can right click and move it that way. It looks as though I'm probably still a little close, so I'm going to move further away. So this is a possible solution. I'm going to insert some keyframes and see if now it stays inside the camera view. And it does. But that's not going to be always the case if it's spinning. So let's go ahead and go to the end and set a keyframe for our object where it's going to go back to zero. Then we'll take a real look and see if our camera is going to keep it. So see how it's turning there? So I think I need to just stay further away from the object. If I wanted to fix this one spot right here, I could go back to my camera and right click and move it up just a little bit and put that final keyframe right in there. Let's take a look at this movie. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. You do want to make sure that you're seeing the bounding box so you really know what is going to go onto the render when it's done. So now it's turning towards the camera. At no point does any part of it leave the frame and you can see that it's rotated back the other way. So to see what this looks like, we want this to happen fairly quickly. Uh, please notice that I have not saved this in a long time and I really should save this uh, with today's date long before this. Should it have crashed or something, I would have lost the work that I'd done. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, render, render animation. And as you can see, at 20% with the shadows not super high quality, it's going to render this out fairly quickly. So I'm just going to wait a moment and let it do that. Now that it's done rendering, I can play that movie by going to Render, Play Rendered Animation. And yes, it's going to be pixelated and small, but I will be able to see the actual speed and camera turn that's happening right here. Once I've decided, you know what, that's exactly what I need so that I can combine this with some live action footage, I'm going to go ahead and change and render at a higher quality. So ramping up to 100%, changing the folder, I'm going to use the up here and make a new folder that says 170306 no problem, 100%. And I'm going to actually say high quality here as well because I'm going to go back and change my shading, my number of samples here to 20 and I'm going to render that as well. So now that I've got a new folder, 100% high quality shadows, I can press file and save as. Now I can add a B right here or I can add the HQ in there to show high quality. This is a Blender file that's got all the settings set up. It may not all render in one class period, but I can try and do it in two. Render, render animation. One thing I like to do is to go to my pictures, Blender render folder for high quality 100%, and you can see that it's still working on that very first frame. If I zoom out, you can see how it is going to take quite a bit longer to make a high quality movie out of this. And it's only 15 seconds long. An alternative would be to make the samples only 10 or even keep it at 5. We could also do a partial render at 5 samples and then later as it gets closer to the camera we can make it 20. There's lots of options for speeding things up. There's that first frame and I'll have to show you what it looks like when it's done.